Hello, everyone. Welcome to the fourth episode of Beyond Vision. Beyond Vision is a talk show initiated by VIACT to propagate the knowledge of artificial intelligence and its ever-evolving applications. I am Devi Sharma, research consultant at VIACT Hong Kong, who is the host for this episode of Beyond Vision. Today, in the league with the earlier episode of Beyond Vision, we have with us another expert in construction digitization, Mr. Vikas Bansal from AECON. I welcome you, sir, to the episode of Beyond Vision. Thank you, baby. Okay. So first, before starting with our conversation with the questions and the answers, I would like you to acquaint our audience about your background, about yourself, sir. Sure. So uh, I work for, uh, for AECOM in uh, the New York region. I work in uh, the transportation sector where I work with multiple teams within AECOM on the client side for multiple pursuits and uh, construction management projects where uh, most of my work is related to uh, uh, strategy related to technology in, uh, in our pursuits in design build projects. And uh, I have a background in civil engineering uh, from Columbia University. And I also have uh, a background in data science from uh, the Flat Island School in New York. Uh, I am a member of the Global Construction Management Leaders, uh, which is a group in Columbia University. And uh, I've been working in this space for uh, for a little over two to three years. Okay, great, great, great. Thank you so much for the introduction. By the way, I would like to uh, let you know that this interview is getting conducted from India as I work remotely uh, for VIACT. Oh, thank you. Okay. So, uh, so moving to the first question, like, you know, as uh, we, I just have told you about the remote culture. So I just want to know that uh, what is the status of remote culture, remote working culture in the construction industry as of now? Like, what do you think? Like in the post-COVID era, is there any uh, you know uh, change that that has also been seen in the construction industry? And how is the AI and ML uh, is changing the scenario? Uh, so I think in terms of remote working. I mean, we, we're part of an industry that, that builds physical things. I mean, you know, we build big things here. But uh, I think in the past couple of years, we have seen, uh, you know, a willingness to adapt in terms of remote working. But, I mean, there's this components to construction, right? There's design, there's construction management, and then there's the actual construction part of it. So I think more in the design and CM side, we are seeing, uh, uh, you know, uh, big companies, uh, SMEs adapting to remote working, and that is primarily to just you know make sure we attract the right kind of talent in our in our companies because that's really becoming an industry standard. Uh, you know, as part of AECOM, I can you know I can definitely say in the in the US region we are really embracing the idea of remote working. Uh, that doesn't help that I'm I'm actually on the side office right now, but. You know, mm -hmm. we are we are all for it for sure. Uh, in terms of uh, the construction side, I think mm -hmm. that is where you know technology plays a big part because you know because we're building physical things, it's it's really not possible to do that when you're you know working from home or working remotely. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are components of our construction work that can either be remote or can be you know. Uh, can be adapted in a remote working scenario. Like, you know, we have, uh, you know, we have tools now, technologies now that help us do construction inspections remotely using, you know, either computer vision based uh, mm -hmm. uh, tools or LIDAR based tools. So I think uh, we're on a track where uh, remote working will obviously never be, you know, uh, replaced in the industry, but it, for sure will be augmented by the tools mm -hmm. that we have right now. And five years down the line, I'm sure, uh, you know, uh, computer vision, is, you know, I am a big, big pro proponent of computer vision. And I think that's something which is gonna make sure that, you know, our safety processes, our monitoring processes sort of mm -hmm. have a, a, a big part of that is computer vision. And it helps our, you know, field inspectors, uh, you know, throughout their processes in construction. Yes, yes, yes. So like, uh, 
artificial intelligence and its applications are like you know re really making a big way for the construction uh, you know remote working culture in the construction uh, ecosystem so uh, like if we deep dive into it so there is a buzzword like digital twin uh, which is uh, a buzzword these days so what is your opinion about digital twin in construction industry how it is how it is playing a role or how it is going to play a role further <laughs> I mean, I, I think you rightly said it's a it's a buzzword in the industry right now, and uh, you know, with all the conversations I have across different you know different sectors in the industry, it it does it's it's really the talk of the town when it comes to technology and embracing that in the industry. But I think there's there's some caution that we need to sort of take when we talk about digital twins because you know, a digital twins are uh, can have to be looked at in two different ways. There's existing infrastructure that we have already built for hundreds of years, and there's a digital twin for that kind of an infrastructure. And then there's one that we, we're building right now. And there's two completely different ideas and two completely different ideas of digital twins with both the sectors. Now, talking about the first part, the existing infrastructure, I think we need to sort of, as an industry, understand uh, the digital twin is really going to be the future. Uh, you know, the manufacturing industry was the last one to really, you know, adapt and embrace the idea of creating something digitally and then, you know, adapting it in the real world eliminates all of your, most of your errors and, uh, uh, you know, costs due to change orders. Uh, for us, I think it's important that we choose the right vehicle to reach that digital twin. For existing infrastructure that could be, you know, uh, a mesh model from a LiDAR scan, it could be uh, a computer vision based model, maybe a few years down the line. For new construction, you have, you know, all your open BIM or BIM tools that we can use to get to that. But in all, I think uh, having a digital twin of a project and using it at every stage of that project life cycle is really going to be the way we have to do our projects because that is the most efficient way uh, and it will definitely take over. Okay, so that means like uh, digital twin is another, uh, like, you know, another innovation that is going to benefit the construction industry. Sure, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an idea, you know, digital twin yes. is not one tool, it's, it's an idea that sort of culminates everything that surrounds the, the construction realm. So, you know, having a digital twin is definitely going to be the next wave. True, true, true. Uh, so, like, my third question would be, what is the adoption rate of these technology in the construction industry as of now? Like, what is the rate of adoption? That's a good question. Uh, I think the rate of adoption depends on, on too many factors. To, for me to generalize it, uh, you know, it depends on geography. So, you know, here in the in the United States, we we have a different rate of adoption. Even within our geography, you know, if you compare an AECOM as against to a small business owner, it's, it, there's a very different rate of adoption that we're talking about. But if I if I want to talk about, let's say, I'm going to focus on the U.S. right now, uh, you know, amongst the you know, the prime contractors or the prime design firms, uh, we, we're all, you know, pretty much using, uh, you know, technology at, you know, at almost every level. Uh, we, we do have a long way to go. And, uh, you know, uh, as, as leaders in the industry, as leaders in our space, I think we have, it's, it's it's our duty to make sure that we 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 use the right kind of tools. We make sure that our projects are delivered in the right way, so that we sort of make an example for our smaller partners and smaller subcontractors to sort of be part of that journey and uh, you know uh, adapt it as well. But right now, uh, in the small and medium enterprises sector, I think we have we do have a long way to go. Uh, there, there are positive signs. I think uh, mm -hmm. uh, legislation plays a big role in making sure that we're using uh, the right tools on our projects. Uh, it gives that right push to our uh, 
uh, subcontractors and subconsultants. But I think on the small to medium size enterprise sector, I think we have we have room to grow. And uh, and you know, in all of my conversations with smaller firms, I think it really helps us uh, that you know they are willing to take that step at this point. And uh, Okay, so like um, I'd like to know, like, has COVID uh, like given some hike to this adoption rate? It has. It absolutely has. Because mm -hmm. I think what has happened is, uh, again, let me let me give you an example of small and medium mm -hmm. enterprises. Like before COVID, uh, the idea of trying to change to make something more efficient was something that a lot of the enterprises were not really willing to take as a step. But mm -hmm. as soon as COVID hit, you know, things like uh, working remotely, things like, you know, trying to put your payroll on, on a digital platform, like those things sort of became a requirement for these enterprises. And they did get to see the benefits of making that change. And now that the, the effect of that is now coming up towards the construction and design side as well, because now they've, they've seen the idea that, okay, maybe digitizing does help and that, that the attitude towards trying to change sort of has now evolved and we're moving into you know, a direction where there where we're having conversations that okay, let's let's talk about how things can change. Let's talk about how BIM can really okay. help us. Let's talk about how moving from AutoCAD into Revit, which is a conversation we should have had a long time ago, but you know, you know, it's it's a good time right now. So let's talk about how that would help us make our process more efficient, save us more money, and make us mm -hmm. more competitive for our clients. Okay, so we can say like uh, the, in the post-COVID scenario, the construction ecosystem has evolved more digitally, maybe we can say that. I, I, would, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so coming to the next thing, I would like you to enlist three grassroots issues that you think uh, like AI and ML technologies can magically solve? Three grassroots issues, if you can enlist. Uh, well, I don't know if we can magically solve anything, <laughs> but uh, I do think uh, there are pressing issues in our industry that you know mm -hmm. uh, uh, AI and ML should target and they are rightfully targeting as well. One of them is obviously safety. I think safety is always the most important thing on all of our projects across all the geographies and uh, you know, uh, uh, monitoring safety on projects and uh, you know, uh, taking the right step at the right time uh, uh, is, is really critical for us to you know, make sure that you know, there's no incidents that happen on our sites. And, I think AI and machine learning softwares and algorithms actually do a pretty good job in, in making sure things are safe across the project site. It's still at a very, very early stage in terms of adoption, but I think all the projects that I've seen things being you know, adapted, uh, you know, there have been positive results. And uh, I do see a you know, pretty good penetration of that technology across uh, different project sites, uh, at least in the US. Uh, the second one I would say is, uh, uh, just project monitoring. I think project monitoring in the sense where, uh, you know, there was this incident that happened in the US where uh, there was basically the project inspection for a bridge failed and that bridge collapsed. Uh, and the reason for that was because, you know, the human inspection processes just mm -hmm. didn't you know they 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 failed to catch the pro, you know the issue that they were supposed to, and sure, the idea sure. is that you know if if there was, you know, constant monitoring using AI you know ML tools, it would have helped catch, you know, situations like those, mm -hmm. and uh, and you know and provide a warning about uh, you know certain incidents that could happen that should not have happened in the first place. So I think project monitoring. Uh, is definitely another really critical tool. And uh, the third one, uh, I would say uh, that would be more about you know, improving efficiencies on our construction sites. You know, it's, it, it's an Achilles heel in, in, in many ways because you know, uh, most of our contractors and, and the labor force in the field, mm -hmm. they've, they've 
really made their process efficient, a, a process which is pen and paper based, which is inherently mm-hmm. inefficient because of the way they've been working, they've really made that inefficient process efficient in their own ways. So when you bring a more efficient process, like, you know, uh, uh, like a digitized form-based tool for reporting on a daily basis or on a monthly basis, because our labor force is so used to working in a certain way, when they mm-hmm. move to a new process, that new process, even though it is inherently and conceptually really good, but because of the way it's been executed, it just doesn't look like it's that it's good enough. So that's the challenge that we have in our fieldwork, the, the way we execute our, uh, you know, the digitization aspect of mm-hmm. construction. But uh, I think the more we have projects, the more our people get used to working and using the, using these technologies. I think that will really be, you know, the driving force, uh, if I may, uh, for our industry. Okay, thank you so much for the answer. And uh, so coming to my last question. So uh, if uh, a layman listens to this, like digitization in construction, so the most, uh, you know, the most question that is asked is generally like construction is the oldest professions, like beautiful monuments were even built when, uh, you know, there was nothing called a term called computer. So what do you think is, why is AIML technologies or such innovation is the necessity as of now? What, uh, why is it so necessary in the current scenario? I think, and I mean, there, there could be many thoughts when it comes to this, but my, my personal, personal thought about this is, as, as an industry, we, we need to find ways to be competitive with, with every other industry out there. And you know, a big reason for that, as I had mentioned earlier, is you know, is attracting the right kind of talent. If if we if we do not adapt, if we don't make our own ways, you know, uh, more efficient and in the way of uh, the way other industries are progressing, I think it it will affect the kind of people we attract in our industry. And it's really important for us to make sure that you know. Uh, uh, younger generations and the generations after that see us as an industry and and they would want to be part of it you know uh, digitization is now part of life of the generation coming next and it is crucial that we make sure that we 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 bring that into the way we work as well uh, that's you know that's that's the more generic outlook that i have but to talk about just the way we do our projects I think it's the right thing to do because you know it's it's not just about making change and changing our ways, but it, it saves cost, it saves time, so it has benefits associated with it. It's not just because we want to change; it's not for the sake of changing that we want to, you know, make things more efficient. We we're going to save money for 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 a certain kind of budget if you can, you know, if you can complete two projects for the same amount of money you would completing one project that is that is a benefit that you're losing if you are not changing so i think uh yeah i mean those are the two you know very very simple reasons i would say we should be you know we should be looking into this very very seriously okay okay thank you so much for the answers and so with this i come to the end of the questions and uh, Thank you so much for sparing your time with us. And it was great talking to you. Hope you had a great experience with us as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So with this, I come to the end of this episode of Beyond Vision. And I, if you like the episode, please uh, share it to your network so that we can re- revolutionize the construction industry together beyond the vision. Thank you so much. <laughs>